Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we are going to take a look at long rigid body chains. Since they are quite more complex, we are going to need some tips and tricks to deal with them properly. In this video, we are going to see an example with long hair. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are again, and we are going to take a look at long chains. In this case, we have locks of hair that are longer. So we are going to need uh, way more rigid bodies with many more constraints, each with their own details. So let's go ahead and select all of the rigid bodies. And once we are satisfied, add replace bodies. That is going to create the rigid bodies for us and the constraints. So right now we are going to use the first one, as always, as the hinge. So we are going to start with a mass of 100 and we are going to set the physics type to kinematic. That is going to make it the hinge. We need to resize it and make it more representative of the part of the hair that it is trying to emulate. We are going to make it bigger. And I am thinking that we need to better see our bones to be aware of what part it is representing. So that's what I'm doing with the character and then going to the bones section. Let's make them smaller because if not, we are not going to see anything. And with that, we are ready to resize it and place it properly. Okay, so when we are satisfied and we have seen it from multiple angles, we are going to take a look at the constraint and lock it as always with one, two, three. And next, we are going to lock everything up because if not, they take too much space and we cannot see the limits of the rigid body and we cannot see what we are doing. So that's why I locked it. And next, we will deal with them and configure them properly. But first, let's deal with the chain. Here, it may be too wide so I'm just going to make it a little smaller because if not, um, since we have two strands of hair close up, they may bump into each other and we may have trouble. So making them too wide, too thick is going to probably cause issues, but let's go ahead and deal with the next rigid body. We are trying to make it as close as possible to the other one in terms of the shape of the rigid body. And we are trying to account for the limits in the bones and the constraints. Let's lock the other constraints up with one, two, three, so we can see what we are doing. And let's go ahead and next deal with the following rigid bodies. So right now you can see that the process is always the same. It is the same as in the other videos. So clearly, if you have already watched them, this process is not going to be new. So let's go ahead and speed it up. As you can see, I am looking at it from different angles. And as I warned you before, this is going to be way too thick. We are going to make it smaller because if not it's going to give us trouble so this setup this hair setup is quite problematic because you can see that the locks of hair are quite close together and that is going to be problematic so let's go ahead right now and deal with the next rigid body and let's see how it looks we are as always looking to follow the chain Let's go ahead and go for the next one. As you can see, we are using the constraints as the limits and everything is looking really, really good. Let's finish it up. Okay, so now we need to make sure that everything is looking good. As I mentioned before, we are probably gonna have to adjust 
the rigid body size, but for now we can start working on the long chain details. So let's go ahead and activate the mass. It is going to be one because we need to increment it as we go up the chain in multiples of two. Let's go ahead and do some damping. And once we are satisfied, we can go to the next rigid body and activate mass, multiply it by two. So in this case, it's going to be two. So always the parents need to have at least mass equal to the sum of the children. So that is what we are doing. And again, some linear and angular damping. Let's go ahead to the next one and set the mass and again multiply it by two. So in this case, it's going to be four. And again, we can use some linear and angular damping if we want to, but we are going to wait and do it later. So let's go ahead and multiply it again by two. So it's going to be eight. And next, remember, it's going to be one, two, four, eight. So the next one is going to be 16. And if we had more, we would follow that pattern. We use multiples of two because it's what's recommended in the documentation. So the last one, it already has 100 mass, so it's not a problem. We can leave it as is. It's going to be more than the sum of the children. So with that, we can now go ahead and start taking a look at the linear and angular damping in the rest of the chain. A cool trick if you want to change multiple values is selecting with left click control all of the rigid bodies that you want to change and then inputting the desired values. In this case, we are changing the linear and angular damping and we are going to change the inertia tensor scale that, remember, makes everything behave like it weighs more, so everything is more stable. We are going to decrease the inertia tensor scale in the last two elements of the chain so that the hair can curl and do those nice curves in the end of the chain that are going to look great. So with that, we can go ahead and start with the constraints. So I'm using here one and two to unlock both uh, directions, both swing motions, and I'm using those swing limits so that we can go ahead and test the chain. Again, I'm going to do all of them in this case because I already know that this is a simple chain with similar settings. So in this case, we can go ahead and test for every constraint the same parameters, and I think it's going to work perfectly. So that's why I'm not going one by one like in the other cases, and I'm using some conservative uh, swing limits. So in this case, I think no frequent testing is needed because, as I mentioned before here, all of the constraints are going to be more or less the same. So we can just use the same parameters for every single one of them. And when we simulate and see the results, if everything goes OK, we don't need to go simulating one by one. OK, so once we are done with all of the constraints, let's go ahead and simulate and see what is going on. Remember, control right click to move things. The simulation is looking great. We have no gravity, remember, and everything is moving correctly. Nothing is moving in a weird manner without applying forces. Everything is stable. So I think we are ready to test this out in our level and see how the simulation works in game. Okay, so here we are in the level and as you can see, the hair simulation is already working so that lock of hair is being simulated as you can see. We are missing the rest of the locks of hair, but the one that we just simulated is working perfectly. It has some problems like for example, it is resting further away than it needs to be from Citrine's body. This can be fixed dealing with the physics asset of the hair and also the body's physics asset. We can debug the physics assets using the show collision command 
And as you can see, the chest is not as precise as possible. So we need to deal with that if we want to have perfectly resting locks of hair. So we can also see the rest of the physics asset because I have worked off camera on the ones that were missing so that this video is not too long. And I followed the same workflow that you have seen before. So nothing new here. That's why I didn't show it. I may have gone a little bit overboard with the physics and the dynamics in this character, but I wanted this to serve as a benchmark and see how Unreal deals with cases as complex as this one, because it has tons of rigid bodies, tons of constraints. As you can see, there is collision between different skeletal meshes. And as you will see, Unreal has passed with flying colors. Okay, so let's go back to our level and let's see all of the dynamics in the hair of Citrine. So as you can see, everything is resting perfectly. I have adjusted all of the rigid bodies in the physics asset of the body and also on the hair. The simulation is looking amazing. As you can see, we can test different speeds, more movement. Maybe it's a little twitchy, but I think I like the, the result. We may fine tune it a little bit, but everything is looking great right now. So we could stop right here. With show collision, we can see the different rigid bodies and how they are working together. And as you can see, everything is looking a okay. And as I mentioned before, I really, really like the simulation. Okay, so right now I'm going to show you a little trick. We can improve our results using the twist motion, but instead of locking it, we use a limit that is really small. And then in our angular motor settings, we can use a slurp. And with that, we are going to be able to improve the results a little bit. Okay, so let's now review our character setup and our animation blueprint setup. Remember that we are sharing a pose between the hair and the character. They share also the same skeleton. So with that, we can inherit the animation from our parent, which is going to be the character. So the locomotion and all of that, we are going to inherit. Next, with this, everything is going to move together because of the same skeleton. And we are going to simulate just the bones from the hair. For that, we are going to use the rigid body node. Remember that we changed some parameters, like for example, the override physics asset, we chose the hair's physics asset. Next, we also used the override world gravity with minus 980 and also component linear acceleration scale and velocity that remember, if we simulate in world space, the simulation is going to have a lot more trouble. So we simulate in base bone space. And then we use these two parameters to regulate how much acceleration and velocity from the character goes to the local simulation. Same thing goes for the linear acceleration clamp. It is also used to control the simulation. And again, the simulation space, base bone space with base bone ref being root. And last but not least, a little trick. This last setting is useful when you have a lot of locked access and you are having trouble. This setting can be activated to improve things a little bit. It may not be the solution for all your problems, but it's nonetheless something that you need to try if you are having trouble with locked access. Okay, so here we have our complete physics asset for Citrine's hair. It is looking really, really good, really cartoony. I love the feel of the hair. If we use the stat physics command, like you see down there, using the tilde key, you can now see the performance numbers. It's not even taking up like a millisecond of CPU time. So, I mean, Unreal is doing great. The rigid body node is awesome. And in my machine, it's looking great in terms of performance. You can use show collision 
or show skeleton to get more info and so that you can debug better your physics asset. Unreal is great in that aspect. Well, so that's it for this video. As you can see, long chains are not that complex once you know a couple of tips and tricks. In the next videos, we are going to take a look at another animation node, which is Anim Dynamics. Remember, if this video has been helpful to you, go ahead, like and subscribe, and we'll see each other in the next videos. Huge shout out and thanks to all my Patreons. As you know, making these videos takes a ton of time and effort because I research in depth all of the topics that I cover. So if you want me to keep making awesome stuff, consider supporting me on Patreon.